Uh, this talk is Max Exploitation and I'm the Rook. What we'll be talking about today is remote code execution vulnerabilities, specifically uh, against PHP Nuke. In this case, we have uh, a PHP Nuke install running on a virtual machine and we'll be breaking into it. Okay. Uh, my exploit was released back in May. Uh, this is uh, the code here. It's, uh, it's very simple. It's, uh, in this case, we're, uh, it's not PHP, it's uh, fire and forget. We give it a, uh, a domain name. In this case, we have to give it a cookie. And uh, the reason why we're giving it a cookie is because uh, uh, we'll go into it in a bit. Uh, in earlier versions, uh, this exploit spans three different versions 7.0, 8.135. Uh, 8.1, or uh, anyway. Uh, it's very simple. Hit enter. Uh, one moment. Oh my god. I apologize. One moment. Uh, the configuration was uh, incorrect. Okay. All right. Uh, it's using the cookie that we provided it, which is a user uh, user cookie. <laughs> <What's that>? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> anyway, uh, it's uploading a backdoor. And <laughs> finally exploits it. Uh, link address. Uh, right now, it's, uh, it uploaded a very simple eval into frontend.php and drop this PHP file. Uh, the reason why I chose this is because there's a backend.php and I figured it would be fitting to have a front end. Uh, now, what we're going to do is uh, recently, uh, just after I released this exploit, uh, Metasploit released a very nice reverse uh, shell for PHP. So in this case, it's uh, the exploit slash Unix slash web app PHP eval. Uh, we set a local host and our host and our port and you are a path to the, the front end we just dropped. Um, those are th and then type exploit. Now it's uh, drop me to a shell, so you name dash a, uh, and cat slash etc slash passwd. Oh. <laughs> Bam. Um, <laughs> thank you. So what was the fallout from some of this uh, from, from this attack? Uh, what I really wanted was a uh, a very simple to use exploit that affected many systems. Uh, here is a Malaysian government website. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Uh, but about a week after releasing my exploit, it showed up on Zone H, defaced. Um, uh, po yeah, popping a shell on a .gov. Uh, the very next day, defaced again by the same crew. So then what would they do? They would go to the vendor's website to get a patch, correct? Vendor got hacked. phpnuke.org. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So what happened here, uh, the vendor's website wasn't defaced like the others. Instead, it added an iframe. In fact, most of the websites, they added this iframe to the bottom of the page. And what this is doing is it's a part of the Eleanor exploit pack. And in Eleanor, uh, it tries a number of exploits trying to exploit Flash, IE, or uh, Java. Uh, 
it is believed uh, from some of the write up of these antivirus companies, it's believed that the same, uh, a few days after phpnuke.org was owned, uh, the US Treasury website was also owned. And it's believed that these were the same people behind this attack. Uh, uh, Eleanor, uh, recently there was the Mariposa botnet which was using the Eleanor exploit pack uh, and it was 1.2 million in size. Uh, this is how modern systems are broken into. Uh, you deface websites, you add an iframe and you start uh, hacking into clients. Now there's this, so why do this? There's a very important quote by Richard Feynman. He is a Nobel Prize winning uh, physicist, one of the fathers of the bomb. What I cannot understand, what I cannot create, I do not understand. So the problem with security today is that there are a lot of uh, white hats that don't understand the exploitation process, yet they're building uh, systems to stop it. These systems are, are fundamentally flawed. I don't care if you're the most Aryan of white hats. You must understand the exploitation process. <laughs> so there are two other quotes. Layers of security. I mean this is something that's a part of nature and something that's been probably prehistory. And then there's Bruce Schneier. Complexity is the worst enemy of security. Now these two ideas are at conflict because by adding layers you're also adding complexity to the system. And these com this level of complexity is vulnerable to attack. For instance, there are buffer overflows found in antiviruses and even firewalls are vulnerable to attack. In this case, Manage Engine Firewall Analyzer 5. I found two vulnerabilities in the software, CSRF and XSS. Uh, the problem is, is that uh, on this firewall you're able to execute SQL queries, very similar to PHP MyAdmin. Uh, so in this, in this same request I could execute SQL on the database and the results from that SQL uh, uh, could be JavaScript and could be executed on the client. Uh, this is really one request that fails twice. Uh, but they're not alone. There's Profence Web Application Firewall and their catch line is defenses against all of the OWASP top 10. Well someone should tell them that CSRF and XSS is a part of the OWASP top 10 because they're vulnerable to it. <laughs> you can do stuff like uh, change what server it's going through. It acts as an uh, a, a intermediary between the internet and the web application. So you can just change what website it's, it's being hosted at. Or you could shut it down altogether. But we, what we're talking about is PHP Nuke. And uh, one thing that I, I uh, this exploit spans uh, almost 10 years now of, of releases from November 2004 till now. Currently this is unpatched. Uh, although the vendor's website hasn't been hacked so there may be a patch in existence, uh, the patch has not been made public. So anyone running PHP Nuke is currently vulnerable to this exploit and the exploit code is on your DEF CON CD. <laughs> So one thing to note though is that in the PHP Nuke 7.0 branch there were less exploits required, less vulnerabilities required in order to gain remote code execution. If you can see on the right, uh, I, there was more, more level of complexity. As time goes by the application itself has gotten more secure. But uh, what we're, we're going to focus on is this chain here uh, affecting 8.135. So we're using SQL injection to obtain administrative credentials out of the database. Uh, we use those administrative credentials to uh, leverage a broken authentication and session management, OWASP A3, and uh, ultimately to get, uh, well, uh, then to get information disclosure about the system, uh, which is required for later, uh, later exploits. So uh, for this three steps, I can do manually, and I'm going to do it in a web browser. So let's do it, demo. I'm going to clear out my cookies real quick, just uh, t from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Um, currently, we're logged in as a user. Uh, we're going to go to the journal module. Uh, we're going to list all journals. Uh, oh user. Okay. We're going to add a new entry. <coughs> 
uh, test body. And we're going to use the evil face for this one. Now we're going to fire up tamper data. So often what will happen is if you run a, uh, a web application scanner, it's, what it's going to tell you is it's going to give you uh, the variable name that's vulnerable to SQL injection and what page it's on. Sometimes you can't modify that, pa uh, that variable directly. So we're going to have to use tamper data to modify it. So tamper data is set and it's going to capture the next query. We're going to tamper that. Uh, mood, devilish. Well, that's where the SQL injection is. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to start off and we, uh, we need to figure out how many, uh, variables are in this, uh, are in this insert statement. So one, two, three. Uh, I know that it's five, but, uh, you can count this up. This can be exploited completely black box. You don't really have to know what's going on behind it. In this case, I'm just counting up one, two, three, four, five, and then a comment to finish off the rest of the query. So as we fire it off, uh, I've modified this application to print out the query for educational purposes, but it's not required. It does help uh, sometimes when you're exploiting SQL to print out the query. So I'm going to fire off this query on PHP MyAdmin. Uh. And it's been very slow. VMware can be a bit slow at times, although it is very useful. Uh, one thing about VMware that was very helpful in this is that it allowed me to break into a virtual system and uh, to be able to fine tune my exploit so that ultimately it could work on the vendor. Although I, I stress this, I never tested this on a remote system. Uh, only, only in virtual environments. And I recommend that you do the same. Wow. Okay. Now, here's the important part. Let me zoom in on this. So, this is the part that we injected into the query. And notice our comment here at the end. And this is commenting off the rest of the query. What's important to note here is that in, when, you're, uh, in an, when you're exploiting an insert statement under MySQL, you can't simply just stack a new query. We can't just say, hey, we want to do an insert or we want to do a, we have an insert and we want to turn it into a delete. We can't do that. Instead, we have to use a different form of exploitation. So uh, another, an important thing to note is that here are the number of columns and we have to have the number of values to correspond to these columns. So. We're going to add a new entry now. And this time, we want to, we want to pull out the administrative credentials in the, uh, in the, uh, so, test, test. Fire up tamper data. Tamper. Okay. One moment. Okay. Oh, fuck. Okay. So, uh, the f oh. okay. Uh, now the first query that we entered, we, uh, we entered one, two, three, four, five. So how did that respond? How did the data change? You notice uh, here are the first record and we have one and two. That we overwrite the date and the time. And when we click on, the, when we actually click on the title itself, we see one and two and four and five. Three went somewhere. We don't know where it is. But what this is, what the significance of this is that we know it's not blind SQL injection. We know that we can control some of these fields. 